the United States peace dollar. Now, this is one of those coins where, you know, you either love it or you hate it. Uh, the history behind this coin is absolutely amazing. With its run from 1921 to 1928, and then again in 34 and 35, uh, this coin is a very short series, but the history behind it is anything but short. Let's go back to how this started. Uh, in World War I, the German government essentially put out and said that the British government could not back their own money. They didn't have enough silver. They didn't have what it took. So the Pittman Act was put into place, essentially allowing us, the US, to sell the British government uh, up to 350 million ounces of refined silver. Well, how do we go about doing that? Well, we melt down our Morgan dollars that we have. So they melted down nearly 270 million ounces of Morgan dollars, and we sold them about 260 million ounces. So with that, in the Pittman Act, it actually stated that whatever we melted, we had to replace with silver dollars. So initially in 1921, the Morgan dollar came back. George T. Morgan, as a 76-year-old man, had to pretty much remake his dies. Uh, the original dies were destroyed, so he did have to remake them. And as you can tell, the $21 is a little different than the other Morgans. But the ANA got involved with this and started requesting a new dollar. Let's make something new. Let's refresh this. The Morgan dollars already had its time. Who started this you know, request to, to make a new dollar? Um, it is traced back in some cases to 1918 to an article in the Numismatist. So many people wanted to call it the peace dollar because it was, it was to commemorate the peace that we were seeing after World War I. But in this article that was in the Numismatist, they basically said they wanted to mint them in such a manner that they would never become rare. So they wanted to mint tons and tons and tons of these dollars to basically, you know, fill the void in what we've already melted. So if you're taking a short series like that and putting 270 million of them out, there's a pretty good chance that they won't be rare, right? Well, that's not at all what happened. So there were also other pushes. There was a paper put out by Farin Zurb. He was a, a numismatist at the time, and it was read to the ANA. Uh, basically, it was read at the convention in Chicago, and it was titled Commemorative the Peace with a Coin for Circulation. Now, his quick letter that he presented said, I do not want to be misunderstood as favoring the silver dollar for the peace coin. But if coinage of silver dollars is to be resumed in the immediate future, a new design is probable and desirable. Bullion for the purpose of being provided. Law for the coinage exists and limitation of the quantity is fixed. All factors that help pave the way for peace coin advocates. And then we gave our silver dollars to help win the war. We restore them in a commemorative and victory and peace. Now, something to think about is this wasn't an easy battle. A numismatists originally started to lobby the mint to try to get them to recreate a new dollar. Uh, they were shot down. It was, not a, it was not an acceptable thing. And they said, no, let's just keep running that Morgan dollar. But once you fail once, you don't just give up, right? They kept pushing and eventually they did persuade some of the government officials to go ahead and try to push this through, try to make it happen. All of the competition participants were notified by letter that guess what? It's time to start making your entries. So all of these artists ended up making obverse and multiple reverse designs. Now keep in mind, November 19th is when they were notified, but the due date on these designs was December 13th. So they had a little less than a month to come up with a coin design. The competition participants included Herman McNeil, Victor David Brenner, and Adolf Weinman, all of who had already designed previous US coins. The artists were then instructed to basically depict the head of a liberty on the obverse to be made as beautiful and as full of character as possible. The reverse would, de would depict an eagle, as prescribed by the Coinage Act of 1792 that basically states we had to have an eagle on our coinage. Otherwise, it was left to the discretion of each artist. The piece also had to bear the denomination, the name of the country, e pluribus unum, and in God we trust, as well as the word liberty. So on December 13th, they gathered to pick a winner. So on that day, all of these designs were looked at and there was one that was chosen. Anthony De Francisci was unanimously selected. So just as many other coins, you start to wonder where did the design come from? Well, Anthony had actually chosen to design this after his wife. 
So one of the interesting things about this is that the only reason he used his wife was the short deadline and the inability to find a model to use to create a coin. But the funny thing is it just fate, I guess, as you have it. Uh, she was interviewed a few years after the design had come out and basically said when she was five years old, uh, immigrating to the U.S. on a steamer, coming just below the Statue of Liberty, she struck a pose and they, they took a picture of her there and it was something that she said she would never forget. And now she's being depicted as Miss Liberty on the peace dollar. So there were initially two designs put in. There was the one that we see now, which is the eagle resting or perched. And then there was another design that he had of the eagle was aggressively breaking a sword. So the thing about the sword is this, the broken sword really didn't depict what they wanted out of this coin. They wanted the peace dollar to be a symbol of the peace that we were seeing. So the sword just didn't match up with the overall picture that many had for the coin. So they ended up fixing it. Now, I say fixing it, it wasn't the original artist. It was George T. Morgan, the same artist who made the Morgan dollar. He did not have much time to fix the dollar or make it the way that they wanted it. He uh, helped to get rid of the sword. They went to the olive branch. He tightened up some of the lines on Liberty's crown, sharpened them up, kind of cleaned up the coin overall. Now they were in a hurry to get this coin out. Basically with the Pittman Act, you know, holding them to replacing all of the silver dollars that had been melted, it was already in 1921 by the time that they were looking at it, preparing this coin, getting it corrected, and getting it out. You don't want to put a 1921 peace dollar out in 1922. So they were in a very big rush to get these coins made, get them produced, and get them out. Now another interesting fact about this is that when the obverse and reverse designs were finalized, there was a press conference held to basically discuss the coin. But the mint director was very, very strict and did not want a picture of the obverse or the reverse going out in the media. So they made it very clear there were to be no pictures taken of the mold that had been made. Now that's what kind of created the trouble that they had with the broken sword. Because the press couldn't actually take pictures, they had to give a description of the obverse and reverse. So when that went out, it went out in papers in New York all over the place, basically the public stood up, they said, hey, the United States is not a broken sword. That doesn't depict us. We're strong. We're, we're not a, anything broken. Now, obviously the broken sword was not put on there to say anything about us being weak or broken, but the public took it that way. So the revolt from the public over this design is what started to fuel the change. Now, just as if you were doing some work today and you rushed through it, there would be things that you did that may not be how you know the design lasts. So that's exactly what happened with the peace dollar. The initial strike in 1921 was a high relief. It, had, it sat really high. Obviously, if you see one today, it won't stack correctly with other coins. Now, that was changed, and they changed a lot on the fly while they were doing it because it was so fast and it went into production so quickly, these are things that they had to face later. So in 1922, they brought the relief down. They brought it down to a medium relief. So the piece dollar you'll see does stand off the coin, but it's definitely not as high as the high relief was. So even after they went and moved it down to a medium relief, it still wasn't good enough. Basically, they said that it had lost a lot of its design features. The hair started to wear together. There were just things that, that were not, you know, they weren't pleasing. So that year, in February of 1922, uh, the artist had to recreate a low relief that also kept all the design features. So obviously you want your coins to look nice, right? So he had to go through the steps to make that happen and turn over another die that basically would allow them to create like a business strike coin, something that the mint could strike, didn't lose all of its design features and still look nice. So when you know that information, you can look and see that from 1922 to 1935, the peace dollars are all the low relief. Now, not only was that the change, he also changed some of the design features. The olive branch is no longer connected to the eagle's talons. Uh, there's also other things like the hills on the bottom, the mounds. There's an added mound on the, the new design. So a couple of things changed along the way. All right, so the specs of the peace dollar are pretty similar to the Morgan dollar. They're 90% composition, so you have 90% silver, 10% copper. The actual silver weight in that coin is 0.7734 of an ounce of silver. And you're also looking at 38 millimeters in diameter. Like I said, very common to the Morgan dollar, including the reeded edge that you see on the peace dollar. Now, unlike the Morgan dollar that was minted in Carson City, you know, Philadelphia, San Francisco, and New Orleans, the peace dollar was minted only in Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. Now, something on the design I want to point out. I hear from a lot of people, why does my peace dollar have a V in it? It's misspelled. That's not trust, that's trust. 
So the designer wanted them to use the Latin style writing instead of the traditional style. So when you get your peace dollars out and you think you have the ultra rarity that somebody misspelled trust, unfortunately, that's not the case. That is the design of the peace dollar. So let's talk about some of the peace dollars you definitely wanna own. You wanna look into getting a high relief. They're really cool. The 2122 high reliefs that came out before they switched over to the medium uh, relief. Definitely coins you wanna get. They're pretty affordable. You can get them for a couple hundred bucks up to a couple thousand depending on the grade. Now on peace dollars, you find a peace dollar that's higher than a 65 grade, you're gonna spend some money because the way that they were treated and thrown into bags and really the strike not being very strong after they brought it down to the low relief, finding a high grade peace dollar, it's, it's gonna cost you a pretty penny. Now, the other things you wanna look into possibly getting a hold of, but be prepared to spend a lot of money is one of the peace dollars that's the satin proof. Now they had only made a few of these. I say a few, but we're talking around, you know, 300,000 plus. Um, now that sounds like a big number, but in all reality, when it comes to coins, that's not. And those coins, there's not a lot of them that they know that are, you know, really out there and left to grab. But I'll tell you what, if you ever have the opportunity and you have the means to do it, get the coin. A couple of the other coins you wanna look for in the Peace Dollar series, it's gonna be the 28 Philly. That coin's gonna be one of the keys in, or shall I say, the key uh, in the series. You definitely wanna be able to get a hold of that to complete a set. Some of the other coins would be the 34 Double Dot. It's kind of an interesting coin because it's a double die coin. So you wanna you want to get a hold of that if you can as well. Obviously we'd like to get a hold of every coin if we could, uh, but if you're set on completing a Peace Dollar collection, you're gonna to wanna to get a hold of that one. Uh, the other that'll maybe throw you off a little bit is the 1964 D Peace Dollar. Now, if you get one, it's probably not real. Reason being is they had originally created in Denver 322,000 of them. They were gonna put them back out and decided to never release them to the public. So I'm sure some of those escaped the mint. And the thing is, is that the government treats them just like they treat the 1933 St. Gaudens. If you have one, the government still owns it. And that's because they were never actually released to the public. So just another little interesting fact about peace dollars. Now, thank you for watching this. If you really want more information about a peace dollar, give us a call here at the store, 702-367-4360. Check us out online at saharacoins.com. Make sure you subscribe to this video. Go down and hit like. Leave some comments. You know, you have any questions about this or some other videos you want to see? Let us know. We'd love to do them for you. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll see you guys in the next video.